I like maps. You have probably realized that at this point, and I don't know if it's just the pages I follow or if it's the algorithm knowing everything about me, but every time I'm scrolling through Reddit, Instagram, or Twitter, I keep coming across really cool maps. Some are awesome just because of how they look, some because of the meaning behind them, and some because of the data slash information they represent, which allow us to understand the reality of that region. So in this video, for something completely not different, I'm going to show you guys some more of these maps. Starting with the ones on the thumbnail, this is a propaganda map used on the side of the Entente during World War One. Now, I couldn't find a lot of information about this, so I'm not sure of the details. Is it a map used by the Entente itself to gain the support of American people so that the US would join them in the war? Is it made by Americans themselves who wanted their country to join the Entente's war efforts? Regardless, it's kind of interesting. It presents a division of North America, which would, according to the map makers, be the result of a Central Powers victory in the war. Florida Florida would become Turconia under the rule of the Ottomans. Most of the continental US would become New Prussia, a presumable German colony with a small American reservation in the south. It's interesting how they would present this to be a really bad thing, just having a small reservation, but then also present that as a solution for Native Americans to exist. On Lower California, Austriana would take place, with New Vienna being the capital of this Austria-Hungary colony, and the whole US West Coast would become Japonica, a Japanese protectorate state. There's also a few cool details like Canada becoming the land of barbarians, Jamaica being New Romania, the Gulf of Mexico, Gulf of Hate, and between the Bahamas and Florida, the Straits of Horror. Oddly, it seems there was a Central Powers propaganda map, which did almost the same thing. Thing, probably attempting to convince the US to either join the Central Powers or stay neutral. Instead of New Prussia, most of the US would once again become a British colony as New Britain. The Atlantic would be called Lake Winston Churchill, who at the time was in charge of the British Navy, also with an American reservation, while Mexico would become an Anglo-Japanese protectorate. The West Coast would also become under Japanese rule as New Japan. I don't get why Japan shows up as the possible victor in both maps when they just sided with the Entente. The second map on the thumbnail isn't that interesting, especially because there's not a lot of explanation. It's, as labeled, a comic map map of Europe from the year 1900. What instantly jumps to sight is the Russian Tsar's octopus, with the picture of the Tsar himself inside it. The octopus stretches its arms to Central Asia, Mongolia, and Finland, where a soldier looks behind, attempting to reconquer their independence. Norway and Sweden are depicted as two large dogs. The Ottomans have their torso and head in Europe, while their lower body slash legs is Anatolia and the rest of their Middle Eastern regions, also leaning their arm on Greece. The United Kingdom is a soldier sitting on top of what seems to be artillery rounds labeled as Canada, Australia, India, and South Africa, probably to represent the power that these great regions granted the British Empire. Apparently, according to the reference on the side, the whole map revolves around Europe's reaction towards Britain. Portugal, for instance, holds a key, believing they hold the key to some issue Europe was facing. I'm not sure which. There's also two cats biting the British legs. They have some text on them, but I can't make out what it is with this poor resolution. Ireland is a woman attempting to hit the British soldier, being held back by a man. Spain is represented by a woman, as is France, with the 1900 World Exhibition in it as well. Germany's Kaiser is leaning on some ships, presumably of its fleet, and Switzerland is reading the good news which their recent Red Cross organization had achieved. Moving on to a more modern map, which presents us with some information about support for a unified EU army in each country of the European Union. Now, keep in mind this data is from 2015, and it's very likely that this has changed in the past five years. I would argue it has probably moved more towards further support, given the loss of some of Europe's traditional allies. Most countries are in support, with the majority being in favor or strongly in favor. Eastern slash Central Europe supports it the most, probably in response to the Russian threat. Scandinavia and Finland isn't that into it, just like Ireland and Austria. And Greece and Portugal seem to be undecided on the subject. Germany is also leaning in favor, but somewhat undecided, while France and the Benelux 
are strongly in favor. We started looking at a map in America, then Europe, so now let's go to another planet. In fact, two of them. This is a map of Venus, if its surface had the same amount of water as Earth, leaving only areas with specific elevation, the same as our continents here. It's weird because there doesn't seem to be a lot of large defined continents. There's two or three reasonably sized land masses, but the rest are just a bunch of islands, with a lot, and I mean a lot, of tiny islands. It's amazing to imagine what it would be like to arrive and colonize an entire new planet like ours, but I guess in in order to do it like this, we would have to completely terraform it, and even then it would probably not be possible. We can do the same thing for Mars, and in this one, we see somewhat of a more familiar scenery. Two main continents, and then a few islands here and there, with a lot of peninsulas as well. There's a round island here on the left, and it honestly seems like the craters are very visible, even in the case of terraforming a full ocean and a green land, as opposed to the current red desert. Next, we have a map of the world's tectonic plates. Now, this is centered on America, so it splits Asia in half, which is kind of annoying, but we can see the different tectonic plates across continents, but not only that. In case you don't know, tectonic plates are pieces of land that connect together on the Earth's outer shell. You can think of it like a giant puzzle underneath the ground. These pieces bump together and move, even though it is only a couple of centimeters a year. Africa has its own plate, South America does too, North America as well, but it's interesting that part of the Caribbean and Central America has its own smaller one. There's also a Nazca plate and a Scotia plate off the American coast. Australia has their own and most of the Pacific too, this one in yellow. And then Europe and Asia are together in the Eurasian plate. Oh, and India and Arabia have their own individual plates as well. It's interesting to see how some countries are located between plates, like Japan, the Philippines, or New Zealand. The following map is also a world map, but entirely different, and honestly this is my favorite because I had never seen one like it. In it we see depicted the amount of years that each region of the world has spent under an imperial regime, ranging from 0 to 2500 years. Now, it doesn't necessarily have to be the same continuous empire, for instance, Anatolia probably includes the Romans, the Byzantines, and the Ottomans, while China includes the Mongols, the various Chinese dynasties, and perhaps even Japanese occupation. It's interesting because, at least for me, when we talk about empires, my mind instantly jumps to the Roman Empire, but mostly to Europe's colonial empires of Portugal, Spain, France, the Netherlands, and Britain. But as we can see from this map, in the big picture of history, those didn't really last that long. The Americas, Africa and Oceania have very little time under imperial rule, and the places with the most are China, Persia, India, Egypt, the Middle East and Southern Europe. Although Europe itself and the Russian slash Asian steeps also have some darker shades, maybe due to the Holy Roman Empire, and then the Mongols reach in the west, their state heirs, and the Russian Empire. The Chinese empires, the Mongol Empire, Alexander the Great, the Romans, the Ottomans, the Muslim empires in the Iberian Peninsula, among others. Speaking of Muslim rulers, this other map shows us areas of the world which have at one point or another been under the rule of Muslim kingdoms, empires or regimes in general, Indonesia, the Philippines and a few spots of Asia, but not that many, mostly focusing on the Middle East, Central Asia, India, North Africa and the eastern coast of this same continent. The Balkans and the Ukraine also saw some Muslim rule during Ottoman times, as did southern Italy and the Iberian Peninsula. This one stretches a little into southern France, I'm unsure if this is accurate, I had never heard of a Muslim regime in that region. Going back to data in Europe, we have a map depicting the percentage of each European country which is covered by forest. The darker the green, the more percentage of the land is forest, not counting the microstates. The top places are held by Finland, Sweden, Estonia, Latvia, Bosnia and Slovenia, while the bottom ones are held by Iceland, the Netherlands, Moldova, Ireland, the UK, Denmark, Ukraine, Belgium and Hungary. Iceland only has 2% forest cover, that's really crazy, but it also raises the question of whether this is a natural occurrence and the climate terrain of this region just isn't apt for forests or if it's the result 
of human actions. It might vary from case to case and even be a combination of both. The rest of Europe is in the medium green with somewhat decent forest cover percentage. A few that caught my eye were Norway, which is so much lower than its Swedish neighbor, or Lithuania, which trails behind the other two Baltic nations, with only half of their forest percentage. Sweden stands out for having a lot more forest than its other European neighbors and it also sets itself apart from the rest of Europe and the world by being one of the few countries where the number of male people is balanced with the number of female people along with Ireland, Iceland, Australia, Bolivia, Peru, Ecuador as well as some African nations. Although I remember seeing a few maps like this which pointed Iceland and Sweden to be more women than men, so I'm not sure if this is that accurate, but according to it, we then have some cases of more men than women throughout most of the Muslim world, as well as China and India, while the majority of countries have a slight majority of women over men in terms of population numbers. When we look at Europe alone, we can also view this gender difference in a separate way. In all but four countries, you have more women than men with a university degree. This is most evident in Nordic and Baltic countries. Oh, and also Bulgaria, Slovenia and Iceland. The only exceptions are Switzerland, Turkey, Austria is kind of balanced and for some reason Western Germany while the east of the country also presents more female scholars. Population tendencies are really interesting to look at and maps allow us to have a much more visual perspective of this. This next map, for instance, depicts the population distribution of the world by sub-region of each country. It's interesting because we can definitely see which countries of the world have more people, but this shows us something else, the concentration of population per square kilometer. It does kind of fail in one aspect though, which is that it caps it off at over 10,000. And I think that gives us a wrong overview on things. For instance, India has places in the darkest red, as do the capital regions of a few European countries. But if you go look at the numbers, the Indian regions might have doubled the population. So this limited scale might create a false sense of equivalence in terms of population concentration, which isn't really the case. Still, it's interesting to see some tendencies like Portugal having most of its people by the coast, just like Spain with the exception of its capital. In the US, the Northeast and Florida hold the most people, and surprisingly, throughout the world, we still thankfully have a lot of free space. And finally, this map of the US, which depicts a man with a chef hat and a plate, holding a chicken where Kentucky is, a simple way of identifying where the state is located. So those were a few more historical and interesting maps that I found across the internet. Thanks so much for watching this video. Subscribe if you want to catch future ones, and I will see you next time for more general knowledge.